Okay, hello everyone. I'm looking slightly crusty because I filmed some eye swatches and I just have my base on so it looks a little bit odd. But I'm going to be filming a another first impressions because I'm trying to get through my first impressions um, bucket, my bucket of shame. Um, I recently bought this, my only... Um, I was going to say Odin's Eye, but my only Black Friday order was from Odin's Eye where I ordered this and the Little Ghost palette. This is the Halloween collaboration or Halloween collaboration between Angelica Nikovis and Odin's Eye. And I was, if you want, my other first impressions for the Little Ghost palette will already be up. And in that video I talked about it. I buy from Odin's Eye a lot because I like the packaging, honestly. <laughs> I like the color stories and I do generally like the shadow like formula especially for the shimmers um, but as with a lot of other brands it has its issues and I'm not necessarily like an Odin's Eye stan I think they need to do a lot of work in doing better um, swatches on deeper skin tones for their product launches any who's in I think this color story is beautiful it's so fall <laughs> it's so fall like quintessential fall with like the burgundies and the oranges and the greens but I love it I love this no matter the time of year and it just fills me with so much joy honestly to see all of the all of these colors arranged together oh okay so I'm gonna do some live up close swatches first I have to do some product shots of this palette before I touch it and then we will do live swatches okay so let's do some live swatches maybe I will Zoom in a little bit more. So, first shade up is the shade Mummy's Curse. Ooh. And this is a really bright yellow gold with pink sparkle. Then we have the shade uh, Howl, which is a beautiful mustard. I mean, who doesn't love a mustard? It's gorgeous. I will never tire of shades like this. Then we have the shade Full Moon, which is another yellow gold. This one is slightly more golden, I would say, but still pretty bright yellow. Um, it's like, a, actually this, what am I saying? This is probably more yellow. It's a yellow base with pink and like gold and blue sparkle, it looks like. Really beautiful. And then we have the shade Goblin, which is a really deep matte brown. Pretty neutral, a neutral matte brown. I love how deep that is. Then we have the shade Wicked, which is a cream, a matte cream shade. Not my favorite. I do not love these types of shades. I know Angelica does, but not for me. Uh, then we have the shade Jack o Lantern which is a matte pumpkin orange, really bright. I love this, that's gorgeous. Then we have the shade Deadly, which is a, looks like to be a smoother metallic orange with a darker base. And then we have the shade Candy Apple, which is an orangey red. Or maybe like a reddy orange. <laughs> then we have the shade Poison, which is a delicious bright matte green. That's so nice. Like slime. Gorgeous. Then we have the shade Witch's Brew, which is a beautiful... Is this supposed to be a multi-chrome? Or at least it's like a really bright shiny green blue duochrome that's stunning oh my god that's so stunning and then we have the shade trick or treat which is a burgundy shade gorgeous a burgundy shade with like multicolored glitter pink and gold and blue as well then we have the shade Vampire Fangs, which is a burgundy matte. I love that. 
Then we have the shade Crypt Keeper. I love the name of that. This is a dark, really beautiful, shiny, metallic green with a black base. This reminds me of a slightly, but surprisingly not even that slightly less sparkly um, version of a pretties for your face shadow that's really really beautiful I can't remember what it's called right now um, and then we have the shade cauldron which is a grungy olive matte green and then we have the shade cemetery which is a slightly lighter burgundy shade almost just looks like kind of a desaturated version of vampire fangs. I really like that though. And then the last shade in the palette is the shade Magic Potion. This is a metallic mint, really sparkly mint. And this is the Trick or Treat palette. This is gorgeous. I love this color story. I really like the little ghost color story, but this is kind of everything, to be honest. Wow. Okay, so let's... I'm going to run the footage now. Up close swatches, eye swatches, and then we will do a little look.
and welcome to another eye swatching portion starting off with the shade mummy's curse odin's eye describes this as being a pale yellow base with multicolored shimmer which is very accurate i would say to me it's kind of like a yellow with a pink flip to it like a light yellow pink duochrome sparkly shade it's really really pretty a little bit more on the sheer side this was a dry application now I'm going in with a wet brush and then my finger next up we have the shade Howl Odin's eye describes this as being a matte ginger which I think is an interesting but also apt description um it's like a basically a matte mustard shade and i have no really major things to say about it other than the fact that it's nice Next up we have the shade Full Moon, which is another shimmer. It's described as a bright gold base with green shimmers on the Odin's Eye website. In my personal opinion, these green shimmers are nowhere to be found. To me, this is a really like yellow, yellow, yellow gold, more on the opaque side, side sparkly shimmer. It's really pretty. I wouldn't say that it particularly stands out as having green shimmer to me but it's still really beautiful nonetheless. Now this is a wet brush following a dry brush application and then this is with my finger. Next up we have the shade Goblin. Odin's Eye describes this as being a dark matte brown which is very accurate. It's really really nice, opaque, not patchy and it's just like a really dark matte neutral brown. It's super super pretty. Next up we have this shade Wicked, which Odin's Eye describes as being a light matte pink, which is just not accurate in my opinion. It's like a matte cream color with some little shimmer particles in it. I don't know where they get a light matte pink from, but don't trust the Odin's Eye website descriptions of this shade. Next up we have the shade Jack-O-Lantern, which Odin's Eye describes as being a matte pumpkin orange, which I agree with this. It is definitely a really bright pumpkin orange. Um, honestly, it's nice. It's really bright. It's really vibrant. I have no issues with this shade. It's beautiful. Next up we have the shade Deadly. Um, this is described as a light metallic copper base with multicolor shimmer. Um, I would say that this is mostly kind of like a regular metallic orange shade with like a gold kind of flip to it if you will or like a gold shine like a copper with a gold sheen um, I don't think that I would describe this as being multicolor shimmers in any way it's more smooth rather than sparkly next up we have the shade candy apple which Odin's eye describes as being a matte brick red which I think is accurate it leans slightly more in the orange red side but I don't mind that at all and it's a really really beautiful easy to use shade
Next up we have the shade Poison, which is described as a matte emerald green. I don't know where they get emerald from. Um, to me that's a little bit of a deeper green, but sure. To me this is like a matte, kind of like acid green. Like an almost neon adjacent green. And for how bright it is, it actually performs really well. Next up we have the shade Witch's Brew. They describe this as being a bright multi-chrome green. They don't say which shifts it has. To me, this is a multi-chrome in the sense that it's a bright, bright green that shifts to like a darker green and then a blue. So it's not super shifty because the colors are closer together. Um, it's still really pretty though and super, super bright. It's more on the smooth side, it's not particularly sparkly, and it is a little bit denser. It almost feels like creamier in the pan, which is why you see with the dry application, it just takes a little bit more time to build up, but I never had any issues with it, um, using it over a glitter glue or anything like that, and um, it's a really, really pretty, vibrant shade. This is me going into the wet brush now. And then my finger. Next up we have the shade Trick or Treat. Odin's Eye describes this as being a fuchsia base with multicolor shimmers. I see where they are getting fuchsia. It's definitely pinkier toned. This is to me more of like a maroon shade with a ton of really beautiful gold shimmer. Um, it has more of an opaque base with a ton of like textured shimmer to it. It has like pink and gold shimmer. Um, I wouldn't immediately describe this as fuchsia but I love this shade. I think it's so beautiful. This is with a wet brush now. And then my finger. Then we have the shade Vampire Fang. This is described as a purple toned matte red brown, which I think is pretty accurate to me. It's like a matte burgundy, but a purple toned matte red brown also works. Um, and it's a really, really beautiful shade. I love it. Next up we have the shade Crypt Keeper, um, which is described as a gold green metallic base with dark undertones. Um, this is like, this to me is an emerald green. Um, it's like almost, not quite a black base, but definitely a dark base, um, like a almost black based, super, super sparkly emerald green. It's so, so sparkly. I'm actually am so impressed with this shade. It reminds me a lot of Brocade from Pretty Sweet Your Face. Then we have the shade Cauldron, which is described as a matte brownish green. I think that's very accurate, like a murky matte green. Super, super nice. Next up we have the shade Cemetery, which is the only shade in the palette that's not my fave. This is described as a matte mauve purple. To me this is like a slightly lighter version of Vampire Fang, but it's just slightly, you just have to build it up a little bit more. Um, it's not necessarily patchy, just not quite as opaque. And then lastly, there's the shade Magic Potion, which is described as a baby blue base with multicolor shimmers. To me, this is a like seafoam kind of minty shade um, that is slightly less opaque 
but super, super, super sparkly. Like, to me, this is like a sea foam kind of green shade with like silver sparkle to it, but it's so beautiful. Definitely takes a little bit of building if you want to work with it dry and build it up to full opacity. This is it with a wet brush now. And my finger. Okay, I have 15 minutes until my family Christmas Zoom, so I'm gonna try to get through this as fast as as much as I can, as fast as I can. Um, I'm really going back and forth between whether I want to use Howl or Jack-O-Lantern as my first shade. You know what, maybe Jack-O-Lantern. As much as I want to use Howl, I think Jack-O-Lantern is going to look the best for the look I want to do. So I'm going to... This is a Moda crease brush. They just sent me some brushes. This is like the first time I'm really trying them. And then I have also primed my eyes with the NARS Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. So I'm just going to take this shade and run it through my crease as my first kind of transition blending shade. Okay, and now I'm going to take the shade Cemetery, I think. That's what I'm the vibe I'm feeling. Or Yeah, Cemetery. And I'm going to take this through my outer corner and my crease. And this is a Cosmic Brushes CB2. I will get better at talking about brushes if it is the death of me. This is where I wish that this shade was slightly a bit more opaque because I just feel like I'm a broken record but Odin's eyeshadows show up a little bit lighter in the pan than they do on the eyes and I feel like this is an example of that okay excellent I accidentally left my camera on so anyway that's neither here nor there eventually I will finish this video but first I'm going to take some NYX glitter primer and put this all over my lid and then for my lid I'm going to take the shade trick or treat because it's so beautiful in the kind of center part and then I'm going to take full moon in the front part trick or treat is like just so stupidly beautiful And then now I'm taking full moon and putting this in the front part. Oh, so pretty. Then I'm going to take full moon and trick or treat on either side of my brush and just blend back and forth between them. So sparkly, so gorgeous. I'm going to quickly do the same thing on my so other pretty. eye. I feel like I was blending a little bit more with the shadows and I just feel like they're kind of blending away a little bit in a way that I don't feel like Odin's Eye normally does, but I don't know. Maybe if they're just having a weird day. Um, I'm going to take Trick or Treat and Full Moon on my fingers and intensify these shades on my lid. I mean, the shimmers I'm having no issues with. And then for my brow bone, I'm going to take the shade Wicked, which is this matte, like, cream, matte beige. And put this on my brow bone. Okay, so I'm going to do the rest of my base, um, and then I will be back to show you the lower lash line. Okay, so I did my base, I did my, my base. <laughs> I did my base. Now I'm going to do my lower lash line. I want to do green. Ooh, green. Um, I'm going to start with the shade Cauldron, which is this mid-toned green. And I'm going to place this along my lower lash line and blend it out and connect it to my top lid. 
Okay, and I'm going to take Goblin, which is what I used in my crease, the dark brown, and I'm going to use that to deepen my lower lash line. Okay, and now I'm going to take the shade Poison. P -p -p Poison. Okay, anyway, sorry. So sorry about that. And I'm going to blend out the edges. Oh, by the way, I was good about my brushes until the lower lash line. So I used this old ABH brush initially then I use the blend bunny oops b3 and now I'm using the moda this doesn't have a type it's just like a big blending brush and I also kind of like how it's blending into my top lid but like not fully out anyway I like how it's going so far and now I'm gonna take the shade witch's brew and just with my pinky, I'm going to put this on the inner part of my lower lash line. And then I'm really torn on what to do for my inner corner. I think I'm going to take the shade Magic Potion, this mint. This is a just a flat, random flat brush. I'm going to spray that so it sticks and then flop her on there. Okay, I really like this so far, so I'm going to finish up the rest of my face and show you the finished look. And I'm also going to put a black, a matte black, right in my outer corners. Okay, hello. So, you may be shocked and surprised to see me looking like this at the end of this video. I either forgot completely to film my outro for this video and it was a long time ago so I don't know or I deleted the footage accidentally. Either way, it doesn't exist. So I am coming back to finish this video because I still want to post it. I will post a picture of the makeup, the finished look. Um, I did take pictures of it and I posted them on Instagram so this is what the final look ended up looking like. Um, and I will just give my brief thoughts on the palette. I actually have done a three looks one palette with this. So it's kind of like a little bit of not spoilers <laughs> for the three looks one palette video. But I guess maybe I'll just give my general thoughts after doing the first impression and doing an additional three looks with this palette. I really, really like it. Honestly, to me, the only kind of dud shade in here is the shade Cemetery. It's just, you can see it in the swatches as well, and you can see it in the look that I did in this video when I used it. It's just slightly lighter than you would expect it to be. It blends away a little bit when you blend it. It doesn't quite stick to your lid and obviously I use primer and everything when I was using this so that shade I don't love but otherwise I actually really 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 love this palette and I think all the shades in here performed really well. Um, I think Odin's Eye perhaps is going kind of back on track in terms of like what I want their quality to be but I still do feel like no matter what every time I use Odin's Eye I have the same issue with their mattes where they don't quite show up true to pan they always show up at least in my opinion slightly lighter which really honestly annoys me I'm not gonna lie but I feel like this palette was a little bit better about that so I'm hopefully I'm hoping that that issue kind of gets rectified in the future, but I said the same thing in my th at the end of the three looks with this, so I'm not going to go on too much about it, but it's an older palette. If you want it or you've been contemplating buying it on sale, I would recommend it. I think it's a really nice palette, especially for fall, um, and I'm sure, I believe they're still in stock, so I'm sure they're going to have like a big clear out before like the next fall and the summer sometime. I would be shocked if they didn't because I imagine they would want to get the previous year's Halloween stock off the website regardless. Um, I really like it and I think the shimmers are in this palette are beautiful. And the mattes are good. They're not the best mattes I've ever used, but the shimmers are really good. So yeah, that is my two cents on that. I will leave you now and thank you for watching this video. Bye.